The good teacher explains. The great teachers inspire by inspiring our students. Teachers let the students study for themselves and they will learn much more than we can ever teach them. I loved the idea, but I had to quote because it never showed me how to inspire my students. It's frustrating. For the past two years, I have been teaching, so I try again and again to inspire my students. One day, I take a step back and remembering how I fall in love with science. I wasn't a very good student. I had studied science when I was in high school because it was just test after test and there was no experiment, no fun at all. When I got to university, I found the love with science again. When I got to university, I actually had lots and lots of free time. What we did, I and my roommate, we had so much fun doing experiments. We made lots of videos out of it. I learned science once again, but in the way that I want, in the way that I love, is making videos and sharing those to Vietnamese community. We have all sorts of fun science and we inspire lots of students, millions of students, to learn science. How do I know that? Because I have millions of views. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I did. Yeah. So remembering that makes me think of three things, three real things that make me fall in love with science. The first one is emotions. I, uh, I have an old friend. He's, he often tells stories. Actually, he is so old that he forget that some story has been repeating so many times. <laughs> That's how old he gets. And uh, one story, uh, he usually told me this story of his mother. His family was quite poor. They didn't have much to eat. The meal wasn't decent. It just had rice and vegetable. But somehow, occasionally, his mother have made that meal very special. In the last Sunday of every month, his mother told everyone to go on the rooftop of their house and have the same boring meals while they're watching sunset. It was really emotional for him. That, that experience was so emotional. Just the same food, but somehow it tastes better. So I, I took that idea and I applied in my class. I'm having here a rock. You know, this rock is very special. This is the only rock in this world. It looks exactly like this. <laughs> I actually pick it up just outside, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can never find something that's unique like this. It is just like every one of you sitting down there. Each of us is unique. You see? Yeah. That is completely useless information. <laughs> every, everybody knows that, you know, every rock is not the same. But I managed to be able to top up a little bit of emotion a little bit of sense of wonder in that. Do you want to hear another one? <laughs> yes? Okay. I noticed that some of you bring water. I want you to take a look at it and think about this. That water in your cup right there is the same water that exists on Earth a million years ago. So maybe some dinosaur even drink the same water as you do, <laughs> right? 
again, it's completely useless information. <laughs> but I just top up a little bit of emotions into it. Right? You see, that is how we can spark the little curiosity. Sometimes emotions are not fun. Sometimes we need to feel sad, like for the environment of a burn, die of eating plastic. You see, the whole auditorium is quiet, and you know, you are full of sad and sorrow. Why do we remember stuff? We remember fact better when we have a little bit of emotion tied to it. Because it is wild in our brain that if more neurons here fire, connect to each other, you can easily call, record when you need it. This is the same reason why we remember our first kiss so well. The second real, real life. How real a lesson can be. The other day, I go shopping for my dogs. So I went to the market and find, tried to find them some meat. I came across this beautiful pig lung. I fell in love with it right away at first sight because, you know, I can bring that pig lung to the class and teach students about lung and breathing. It's so visual for them to see this. And they take turns, you know, imagine their faces was blow away. Well, they never seen an actual lung inflate before. And that day, my dogs, they have to sacrifice their meals <laughs> for the class. <laughs> That's what they have done to education. Great <laughs> contribution. <laughs> On the brother. Like you, right? Another real life we can give the students is that a real challenge. For example, I call this the forest challenge. If I were a, a traditional teacher, the thing that I did would be like this. The challenge is all students have to go through a forest. So traditional teacher will tell the student exactly the way you turn left here. Here are the spiders, here are the poison ivy, here are the bees, don't touch it, don't touch anything, just follow me. That's what we did. That actually, that's what I used to do. The group of students and teacher pass, go through the forest, but they will only know one way, only one way that the teacher have guided them, but with the same challenge, but different approach. The teacher say this, I will give you guys backpacks with food, drink, compass, and I will show you the instructions to avoid anything dangerous, and then the group of students will individually go through the forest in their own way. After that, the students will get together and share their experience. Different students will have different way go through that forest. Any subject given, even literature, history, not just science, can use this, this approach of introducing a small challenge in real life and then bring that to the classroom. The last one, real purpose. This is actually the hardest part of all. We human beings, we always do things with purpose. Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you go to work? Why do you do the certain thing that you do? Why do you have to build an enterprise? Why do you have to solve the world problems? Everything starts with why. The why is the motivation to it all. But 
as teachers, we forget that they are the student, they are just children. Their brain is not comprehend, they cannot comprehend big things. So, to give the student the purpose, we have to look at individual students. I, um, I have a very difficult student. Uh, in the first semester, he refused to cooperate with me or do teamwork with anyone in the class. He was difficult. At the end of that semester, I sat down with his mom and I found out that he loves biology. In every book of biology given to him, he only read about animals. So I take that little love of him, little interest of him, into the lesson plan. So everybody else doing the engineering project, but I say that, please do this in the engineering project for your turtles. He did that with a great deal of love and with a great deal of focus. And I don't have to tell him to do anything, so I can be lazy. Yeah. <laughs> the whole point of education is to prepare our children to face unknown futures. I think we create that world full of challenge for them, whether it's environment, pollution, overpopulation, every single of that challenge are real. It is real. It is our duty to educate our students, our children, to be well prepared for that unknown future. And I believe that the way we can do it is by introducing real emotions, real life, real purpose into the classroom. That's my idea in terms of education. Thank you.